Good morning. I'm so glad that y'all have uh, joined me this morning and welcome back to another Decorating Discoveries where we're discovering uh, tips and tricks um, for different ways to update, remodel, uh, decorate our homes. So I appreciate you coming back and joining me and thank you for submitting questions and this is I really enjoyed this and I hope you have too. So um, maybe share this with a friend that's thinking about updating their flooring because today we're going to be talking about um, transitions between the same type of flooring and different types of flooring. So there are some things that we can do or that you can do um, when you're talking to your contractor, when you're making those decisions on how those those rooms connect and make it feel a little bit more intentional and not like, uh oh, <laughs> this is what I'm stuck with. So, um, so Stacy uh, asked this question, and on I believe it was the uh, live with Brenda. Did y'all catch that one? On um, talking about adding value to to our home and thinking about resale when we're when we're making decisions on flooring. Because sometimes you, you don't know, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? So if you didn't catch that, it's a really, she provided lots of great information. So um, I'm, I'll am i probably go back and rewatch it a few times too. It, it's just good information. Um, okay, so I hope if you're listening that you will let me say hi and let me know that you're here. And um, it's just good to see names so I, I can envision your faces. So I hope you say hi. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about tips on those flooring transitions when they're not the same or maybe when, specifically Stacy's question was, what do we do or can we match up existing wood flooring with new wood flooring? So, um, and just real quick, that can, that answer is different when we're talking about a luxury vinyl plank and we're talking about, um, on-site installed hand scraped solid wood flooring. So those are different. So um, I'll, I'll talk about both of those. Okay, so the first thing that I would say, anytime you're 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 in doing anything in your home, really, this would apply. It doesn't apply just to floors. So you'll want to make sure and communicate with your contractor. Do not make assumptions as to what he's going to do or that he can you know, he knows exactly what you want. Don't ever make assumptions. And any contractor that's worth hiring will not be offended by this because every, all good contractors want their customers to be educated because it's a better process for everyone. And the same thing applies to your design professional. Um, we're not offended by questions at all. So don't be afraid to ask a question. Um, and, and when you're looking at uh, considering to do anything in your home, if it's flooring, if it's tile, if it's paint, it's great to communicate with your contractor and ask questions and go through these tips. But your painter or your tile installer or your wood floor installer should not be your designer. I'm going to say that again. Your contractor should not be your designer. If you don't hire a design professional like Priscilla Braswell Interiors, you should be the designer, not the installer. Okay? They're not the designer. And there's a difference between an installer and the designer. So don't trust them with aesthetic choices. They're a good resource that you can talk with them and communicate with them and ask questions and ask, you know, hey, what what are you what are you installing a lot right now? What what are other people doing? That's great. Um, but there's a difference between that and them being the designer. So don't do that. OK, so communicate your expectations with them. What, what are you trying to achieve? What are you looking to do? And if you're looking to do something that is not achievable, then you want to know that up front, not after you've already ripped out or bought material and that type of thing. Don't assume that um, 
they're going to think through that process for you. They should, but don't assume. So, and sometimes what will happen is if you'll ask, let's say, okay, I want you to just rain them. I want you to restain my front door. Okay, restain it. And then the result does not look great. And, and you ask, well, why did you do it that way? And the contractor responds, you said restain it. Right, but I'm trusting you as the contractor to know that you need to prep. And you, is, it, is it an option to restain? Is the surface ready for a stain? All those things. So don't assume that they're going to follow the, the correct process. You want to ask those questions up front. You know, ask, how are you going to, if you're wanting to do your wood floors and you're wanting to combine an old and new, how are you going to do this if they say they can do it? Ask, how are you going to do that? And go do your research and make sure that they're doing it appropriately and correctly. Um, and also they might tell you, no, you can't do that or that's not a good idea. It's always a good idea to maybe talk to two or three contractors and get some different opinions. Because sometimes what I've found when a contractor says you can't do that, they just don't want to do it. They just don't want to. <laughs> it's harder than starting over, maybe. So they don't want to try to match something up. There could be lots of reasons, but it, it may not be that it can't be done. It just might mean they don't want to do it. Okay, so, um, I, okay, so the next thing you want to do is after you've communicated your expectations, ask their opinion. What do you think I should do from, you know, they've done, they've in, installed floors for 15, 25 years, whatever. They have some experience. They're a professional installer. So it's, it's good to ask them questions. I'm not saying don't ask them questions. They shouldn't just, they just shouldn't be designing the floor. So ask, you know, well, have you seen a problem doing this? What, what could I potentially, what problems or concerns do you see that I could potentially have? And that might not happen to you, but it's good to know up front. Communication is good because it, it removes a lot of our, the surprises when you don't know something's going to happen and it happens. There's this time of shock and, oh my goodness, this is awful. But when you know something's going to happen, you're a little bit better prepared. And when it does happen, you're like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. That's not a big deal. That's not anything to be concerned over. So knowing what something is going to do, it puts you at ease and it makes for a smoother uh, project. And home remodeling and uh, renovating can be a stressful time. So anytime you can take the guesswork out and you can be educated on what's going to happen and what's not going to happen, it's more enjoyable for you. So, and that's ideal, right? I want the process when you're working with me, I want it to be enjoyable. Okay, the third thing to keep in mind is to use a professional. So, and use a professional in that particular area. So here's what I mean by that. Don't have your tile guy, let's say you're laying some new tile in a bathroom, but maybe there's wood in the hallway and there's a transition there. Don't have your tile guy take up any part of your wood floor. I'm gonna say that again. Don't have your tile guy take up any part of your wood floor. The only person that should be touching your wood floors is your wood floor installer. Now, if you have done the opposite and it's worked out, you're the minority. So I'm trying to save you some pain and heartache and anguish and money by not doing that. Okay, can it work out? Sure, but lots of times it can go south. So don't do that. It's just, it's, be it's better, it's a more enjoyable process for you if you have the professional for that area tackle that, that area. Does it require a little bit more work on your part if you're managing? Yeah, it does. Is it worth it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so, for the specific question of wood to wood, wood transitions. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that one because that was the question. 
<laughs> okay, so um, when you're matching older wood flooring to, and you want to install newer wood flooring, can that be done? Yes. So if your contractor, again, has told you, no, that can't be done, he just doesn't want to do it, or she just doesn't want to do it, more than likely. Now, there are exceptions to everything, but more than likely, the answers they just don't want, the real answers they just don't want to do it, because it can be tricky. Um, if you if they maybe don't have experience with that, because it's sure it's easier just to rip out and start all over fresh. That's the easier thing to do, and um, it it honestly right if we could just rip it all out and start fresh every time, that would be great, right? That's just not always an option. That's not a realistic option. So we have to problem solve and figure out ways that will work better for our specific and particular situations. So what I have found is that it is easier to match old and new when the, uh, the, the flooring is running the same direction and specifically on the longer side of the plank. So um, when they run a parallel to each other, okay? So, and the reason that is is because there's a line there from the edge of one plank to the other. And if you notice, when you look at um, your wood floors, and this is a great tip for all of your wood flooring um, if it's hand scraped installed on site. So this is this uh, question, this, these answers really apply to that, not necessarily to a uh, vinyl, luxury vinyl plank, okay? Is that take a look at your flooring and you'll notice that unless you have a really, really dark stain or something that's really, really light, but a lot of those medium tones that a lot of us have, is that you'll notice that there's variations in the color. There's lighter areas, there's darker areas, maybe there's some knots, and if it's scraped, anytime you scrape, you reveal different levels of the wood, and each level of the wood apply or accepts stain differently, so you're going to get some different colors, and that's not bad. Again, that's just communication and being aware of what certain um, applications and installations, those result, what the results you'll get from those. So when you understand that, you have a, a more realistic expe expectation. And anytime we have more realistic expectations, we have better results. Because when you use vague expectations, oh, or if a contractor says, it's going to be great, I've been doing this for 25 years, you'll love it. Mm, that doesn't cut it for me. And it shouldn't cut it for you either. Just saying. So um, you want to take a look at the floor and see all the existing variations. And in the new floor, you're going to have existing, you'll have new variations. Okay. So, and I, that's not to insult your intelligence. I'm sure you knew that. I just want to point that out so there's not any surprises. So it's not um, like a tile that the color is uniform. The, the color is not uniform in uh, wood floors. So they won't be uniform, the color won't be uniform in the new wood floors. So just take a look at that and see, and you'll also notice by maybe some windows, the sun has faded. Maybe areas of your wood floor if you have direct sunlight. And has anyone ever painted uh, a piece or had a piece of white furniture that had a top coat like a polyurethane on top. Has anyone ever had that? Raise your hand. Give me a heart. Say, I have. Have you ever noticed that over time, what happens to that top coat? What happens to that polyurethane top coat? I'll wait while you answer. That's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Answer. What happens to a poly? over time, a top coat on furniture, or maybe trim. Maybe you have an oil base trim, which I hope you do. What happens to that white trim over time? Crickets. <laughs> what happens is it yellows. That's what happens. So the same thing happens to your wood floors over time. They become more yellow. And that's because of the top coat. 
So, um, just know that, you know, get, look a little bit closer at your floors. You've probably not got, gotten down on your hands and knees and looked at your floors. Now might be a good time if you're considering that to look at them and see really how they, how they worn over the years. Do they still look brand new? So you'll have some of those differences because you have a, a lived in nice wood floors. That's the beauty of a wood floor. So a brand new floor. Hey, Sharon. Thanks for answering. <laughs> so um, peels and fades. Yes, yeah, sometimes it does. Sometimes uh, that poly does kind of flake up. And more often times than not, um, with the fading and the peeling, what happens is, is that's it's that poly that's wearing down. So that's what that is. It's wearing down and it gets, sometimes it gets on darker uh, items like a, uh, or objects like wood floors, it'll kind of get a milky look to it. Have y'all noticed that? So yeah, that's so true, Sharon. Good point. Um, good point to bring up. Okay, so take a look at that. And when you add new flooring, you're not changing the wear and tear on the old flooring. That doesn't make the new flooring bad or not match. There's just a different level of wear, right? And so... <laughs> Hi. So that's not, that's not a bad thing. You know what? Give it a few weeks if you've got kids or pets or whatever, and you're going to get some wear and tear on the new floors too. Just give it time. Okay. So make sure that, okay. So when you have the, let's see, when you have the wood running this direction, here's the old floor, and then here's the new floor. When you run it like this, that's an easier way to add a new wood floor and it be less noticeable because this line between the planks. Okay, so what if the floor will be running like this? What about then? How does that look? Well, here's what you want to do in those situations. You want to make sure that you feather in, like if this is the flooring, you want to make sure you want to feather in each of those pieces. I really hope that the video does not stop right here or that. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? When you go to look at a video and the person's making a crazy face, I hope it doesn't stop right there. So you'll want to make sure and feather each of those pieces in. So typically wood floor, when it terminates, um, it's staggered. It's offset when it's installed, but where it terminates is a straight line. So now you have all this offset all these offset planks with a straight line. So the reason why you want to go back and feather is because if you look around your room, there are no areas where there's just straight lines where it's cut across. So if you just go in and add new flooring like this, instead of feathering, your eye is going to go to that every time, all day, every day, you're going to notice that. So that's why you want to make sure and feather in every, uh, every plank that touches a new plank. You want to continue that offset look. So no straight cuts. That is probably um, the most, one of the most important tips. And you want to make sure and feather in each new plank. Don't just pick a few because what happens if you say, okay, I'm going to feather in this one and this one, but I'm going to leave this one and this one cut straight. So you still have that straight line there. And it's hard to see with like fingers. So I can provide pictures for anyone that has more questions with that to show you the difference of um, how much how much better that that will look if you feather it as opposed to leaving those those blunt cuts. Okay, so when you're combining old and new and you want it to feel as though it's always been old and new. If you're just now joining, say hi and let me know where you're listening from and, and just let me know that you're here. Even if you're, you're not watching this live, still say hi. Still say hi. I'll come back and say hi to you too. So ways that you can make those feel like as though they were installed all at the same time that they weren't two different phases. And let's face it, sometimes we can't do everything at all, all at once. I've installed wood flooring at my house, one, two, three, four, in four different phases. 
four different phases and you cannot tell where I've done it. You can't promise. So I, not only have I done this personally, I've done it for clients and they're very happy with the results. So just know that. And if you have any, of, of course, if you would like to do this, you can call me. I would love to replace your flooring or update your flooring. Um, any, any of those items, feel free to call me and we can design it and I can I bring in my contractors to do the work that I've done it with before. So you won't be my guinea pig. <laughs> no one wants to be the guinea pig. So what you can do when you're adding or combining old and new is that you can reseal the old floor and because remember that the poly can yellow the wood floor. So what you can do is add a new coat of poly. And the other thing is that what typically we will install a lower sheen poly so the floors aren't super, super shiny because that adds some camouflage. Have you ever noticed that if you have something shiny and it's got water drops on it, like maybe a countertop that's polished, you can see all the little water drops. So if that, if that drives you crazy, the same thing's going to happen on your floors. You're going to see all those little paw prints from Sweet Little Puppy. You're going to see all those little um, footprints from Sweet Little Baby. You're going to see all those little watermarks from where you've uh, dr spilt water along the way or something like that. So you'll want to get uh, a, a sheen on your poly that's not quite um, as reflective. So you can reseal the, the old floor and the new floor, and that helps marry those two to that together a little, a little better. And just as far as maintenance and wear and tear, you really want to re-poly every five to seven years anyway, which no one does that in my experience. But that's what you should do to, to ensure the integrity of the flooring and the finish. Because if you're, if you're thinking about redoing your wood flooring and you get down and you look at it like, like I've asked you to or recommended that you do, you'll see that it's not, it's not brand new anymore. There's, there's been some wear and tear there. So um, there's no perfect flooring. Um, all flooring requires maintenance and wood flooring requires maintenance. It's not high maintenance. It's not. I, I love wood flooring. It's, it's a great option, in my opinion. So, so consider resealing or top coating the old and the new at the same time, and that will help. And then when you're thinking about the stain on when you're trying to match up, again, don't. Okay. This is just my opinion. But don't trust a contractor that says, oh, I can match this. Don't worry about it. I've been doing this for 25 years, sugar. And, you know, don't worry about it. First of all, don't call me sugar. <laughs> Second of all, I don't care how long you've been doing it. I want to see a test board. Always get a test board. And if you get any pushback, there's your red flag. There's your red flag. You want a test board. So, um, did I say every three to five years? I meant five to seven, Sharon. Sorry. Five to seven, seven to ten. It depends on your wear and tear. You know, if it's a dining room that no one's in there, you're probably okay. But in a family room, yeah, it, it just lightens over time. And what happens, Sharon, when, you, when you're talking about that peeling and fading, um, it'll look, it'll have a milky appearance. So it'll, you'll, if you'll, if you compare the old and the new, that's what you'll see. If, if there's, there's a, a milky kind of a, appearance to it. So that sometimes there's your sign that you might need to repoly. Okay, so you want to request a test board of the stain until you get it just right and you're happy with it. So a couple of quick tips on a few of the other types of transitions and floors is that wood to tile. 
the tile needs to be completed first and then use a reducer. So, and, and it, the reducer, what it does is it provides a nice straight line and it gives a really nice sharp edge because nothing's going to drive you crazier than when you see, look down at tile and it's not exactly straight, right? It just doesn't look professional, but that reducer that goes, the wood reducer that goes on top of the tile, that provides a nice straight line. Okay, and so then you'll want to caulk between the wood and the tile to really finish that off. So that's the best way to, and the proper order for tile to wood. And again, have your wood guy do your wood, your tile guy do your tile. Okay, carpet to tile. Make sure the tile terminates evenly, that nice straight edge. It really has to be straight in these situations because, like I said, if it's not straight, man, your eye's going to go straight to that every single time. So be a stickler with your installer and make sure those line, that tile line terminates evenly. So it will show. Try to avoid those metal strips. It's just, it, it's that, it's a contrast. It'll draw the eye to it. And you really don't want to draw your eye to a transition between two different florins. That's not something we want to accentuate and draw the eye to, right? So you want that to be smooth, a little bit smoother than that gold or uh, type of transition. So you just want your carpet to really hug up against the tile. It's really nice, tight fit. So there's no gaps. And if you have, maybe this is a, a rental property. You, and if the flooring or the carpeting has a lower pile and it's not quite as dense, you can have your installer roll or tuck the carpet to give it a little bit thicker right there on the tack strip up against the tile. And it's a, it's a more polished uh, finish that way, polished installation. So I hope some of those tips were helpful for you. If that was helpful for you, I hope you share it and um, like this, like this a video. And I hope you come back on Friday for another video. And we're going to be talking, I'm going to be sharing my favorite ways to just simply refresh a room. Like we're not talking, rip it out, rip it out, rip it out. Just simple ways to really have, it's a high impact. So um, I think you're going to like that one. And I hope you come back. So thanks for coming today. Thanks, thanks, Stacey, for submitting that question. I really appreciate y'all interacting here. So Sharon, if you have a question for me, I hope you leave a comment and we can do a live with your question. So I hope y'all have a great rest of your day and I will see you back on Friday. Bye guys.